Hello chess lovers, Sorvan here and in this video I want to share with you a very exciting game played between Serdian Zakic and Serdian Cvetkovic. The game was played at the 1989 Alsta Open. Alsta is a city in Italy. In this game Zakic had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Cvetkovic answered with Sicilian defense. Knight f3 e6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. Knight f6, knight c3, d6. Shevening and variation is on the board against which white chose the razor sharp keras attack. Uh, from move 6, white is demonstrating his aggressive intentions and is launching a kingside pawn storm. Knight c6, well, usually in here, black is playing h6, stopping g5. This is the main move, but in our game we see knight c6, which is also a strong continuation. g5, knight d7, bishop e3, bishop e7 h4, black castled kingside, and we have an active jump by white queen, queen h5, rook e8. With this move black is freeing the f8 square, both black can put his knight or the bishop on f8, but in, in this razor sharp position this is actually a loss of tempo. And instead playing a6 or knight takes d4 is better, but instead we see rook e8, and the problem with this move is that Black is also somewhat making the pawn on f7 vulnerable. Here white castled queenside, a6, f4, bishop f8, f5, e takes f5. A terrible blunder which steps into a marvelous combination. In here knight d e5 is good, although after f takes e6 or f6, white is maintaining a strong attack. But instead to f5, black answered with e takes f5. And as we have reached the critical position, you can pause the video and try to find white's next moves. Ready? A few moves earlier I actually gave you a nice hint and told you that by playing rook e8, black is making the pawn on f7 vulnerable and probably already, you may have already guessed that white's next move was queen takes f7. Uh, if you are watching my videos regularly, then probably you remember that a few days ago I shared with you Yuri Trainov's game against Luban Popov, where again a similar queen takes f7 sacrifice blew apart black's position. In case you missed that game, the link just popped up on your screen. Uh, but now let's see what happened in our game. So black accepted this marvelous queen sacrifice, but if not king takes f7, for example, if king h8, then anyways black's position is lost. Bishop c4 can follow, if bishop e7, then knight e6, and yes, the game is over. In our game we see king takes f7, and white is emphasizing the vulnerability of a to g8 diagonal further, we have bishop c4 check. Rook e6, knight takes e6, queen a5, knight c7 discovered check, king e7, and there comes the second knight, knight d5 check. Just no way out and the miserable black king is being chased all over the board. Knight e6 check, well knight takes a8 is also strong, but white is heading for a more accurate continuation and with this line, white also wants to emphasize the fact that this queen is awkwardly placed. King e8, bishop d2, queen a4, bishop b3, queen takes e4, and rook e1. And now, already at this point, you should give up your queen, otherwise, if we move like, for example, queen takes h4, then you can step into an immediate checkmate. If king f7, then knight f4, discovered check, and then bishop takes d5, checkmate. So in our game to rook e1, black answered with rook b8, preventing any unpleasant forks, and lost the queen on e4, f takes e4, rook f1. At this point, materially, we have an equality, right? And Black even has an extra pawn, but of course, black's position is totally lost. Knight c e5. Bishop b4, knight f3, knight c7 check, king e7, rook d1. We have another very nice target. Knight c5, knight takes c5, a5, trying to deflect the dark squared bishop. Of course, if you recapture, then you can get checkmated. Uh, black played a5, 
and we have another very beautiful move, knight a6. I have to tell you that at this point even bishop takes a5 is winning and then white can play bishop b6, but white chose this interesting looking knight a6 move. The idea is that now if b takes a6, then white can capture on d6 and then on f8, and then if king takes c7, then bishop d6 is winning. Uh, that's why in the game to knight a6, black answered with a takes b4, removed the dark squared bishop, but lost the rook on b8. And already at this point, white has an extra rook, right? Black could already resign, but made a few more moves. Knight b5, bishop g4, rook takes d6, e3, rook b6, e2, rook takes b7, check, king d8, and after knight c6 check, finally we see a resignation. If, for example, king e8, then bishop f7 check, mate will follow, and if king c8, then this time we can announce a check made by playing rook c7. That's why finally after knight c6 check, we see a resignation. Another very beautiful attack, which blew apart the Sicilian defense. Looks like that in many cases, the f7 square turns out to be Black's Achilles heel and one should always keep an eye on similar tactical ideas. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. In the end, feel free to check out my early uploads as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.